Um, cool. Uh, hi, I'm Jeremy Khan. Uh, my screen's up here, which is what you can see up here. And uh, you can see my face. I uh, just double, double click the, uh, my screen on your screen to make it larger. Uh, but hello, uh, thank you Vimcon for having me. This is really cool. Uh, you know, years ago, I never would have thought that I would be speaking at a Vim conference because I remember when I first learned Vim, this is like nine years ago, like I hated it. In fact, I actually wrote this like this gnarly screed against it, I think on like on a Google Plus post or something. That's how long ago this was. Like, like it's so unintuitive, it's so hard to use. Why can't it just be straightforward and easy to use? And now here I am um, talking to uh, 62 people right now about uh, how I have uh, configured it to work and how you can also get it working well for you. Um, and uh, so yeah, let's get into it. So uh, this is all about giving them superpowers. So um, I would like to preface first that, um, well, first off, hi, I'm Jeremy. Uh, we can, if you wanna see a little bit about me, I'm Jeremy C. Khan everywhere on the internet. So, you know, uh, GitHub, Twitter, you name it. Um, but this, uh, I, I'm not a Vim purist by any extent, because um, I, I, I don't really feel a need to. It's cool if you are, or if anybody else is. Um, I think it's great to you know learn anything in a way that works for you. Um, and I, of course, you know having the the, the, fun, the the Vim fundamentals down pat is pretty critical to doing anything with it. But uh, after a while, you make it your own, which seems to be a pretty common theme uh, in the talk so far. I've noticed, uh, and this is. Along the lines of Liren's talk of uh, kind of turning your uh, turning them into a bit of an IDE, but it's kind of a different path. I love really powerful plugins, uh, and we're going to get into those. Uh, so first off, I'm going to just drop uh, uh, in case it, it was missed because people are filing in. I'm going to drop in a uh, thing into the chat. So that's uh, this Git repo. This is called Vim Docker Env, and this is basically just a little sandbox that I'm going to use to show you all how to uh, get Vim from like nothing at all to like uh, a really you know a, a really powerful productivity machine. Um, now this uh, little repo is named after the thing that it is, which is a Vim Docker and yeah, Alex Gray, um, uh, a, a, a a Vim Docker based uh, environment. Now I would preface that. You don't actually need to use Docker for any of this stuff. Um, I'm just, I have it so that like anybody who's watching this can pull this down and it guarantees that it runs uh, the same in everybody's environment. Because if you're using, you know, certain uh, operating systems or certain, you know, like versions of things, things might not work, but using uh, Docker kind of brings it all together. Um, so yeah. If you saw this before, you could. Uh, it's pretty easy to get this going. Just follow, the, uh, follow these instructions. Download Docker, clone this repo, CD into it, and then run the correct uh, script for your um, the correct command for your operating system. Uh, and then uh, there's another step here that I've already done, uh, so I can't do it again. But I took a little video of it. But it's basically installing the plugins uh, for for your uh, for what we're going to be building here. And also, you could take this repo and kind of fork it or use it or, or, or adapt it for your own needs. It's almost like a sort of uh, Docker-based Vim IDE. Um, so basically, this is what I took a little video of how uh, the install process works. So basically, uh, you just go into it. It's a, it's a bare Vim. Then you do plug install. And then it does all this stuff. Um, and basically, all I, I believe what's, what's going on here, it's, using, uh, get, it's installing Git submodules uh, in the background. Um, but it doesn't take too long because we've only got a couple plugins here. Um, and now we can see th this is a recording. So that's how the install process works. So let's just see what I have installed. Uh, so first off, I'm on OS 10. So I, uh, here is the command that I've got ready to go uh, on the, the OS 10 side, or Mac OS, I guess it's, it's called. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, this is a pretty standard uh, Docker run command. But what it's doing is I'm in my uh, my Vim Docker env locally checked out repo, and with this part uh, will actually mount that repo as the Vim users home repo. So I'm gonna run this. I am in Docker, and what I can do is just type who am I. This is for folks who are maybe not have used Docker in the past. Um, 
I am Vim user now. So um, I can just fire up Vim. And there it is. Uh, so I like, this is the first two, the, the, the first plugin that I'm going to show, which is just, it's just a fun one. It's called uh, Vim Startify. I just like the philosophy cow. Uh, there's this little, the, the, this most recently used list here. Um, I didn't really use that. I just like the philosophy cow. It's better than, to me, it's more fun than the, the standard Vim startup screen. Uh, so first off, well, actually, let's just use it to open up our VimRC. So actually, I just want to show that we are in that Git repo now. We're in the Docker environment with the home, with, with, with the Git repo mounted as the home directory, and we can see it on the left side here. So let's just pop into that. Now, uh, I just want to show real quick. Um, in fact, let's just go back to the GitHub repo for one moment. Uh, here is the Docker file. So it's pretty minimal. Um, and if you want to use it or adapt it, please be my guest. Uh, it's just installing uh, Vim and a couple other things just uh, so that the install process works. And we're, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, calling external uh, commands and really getting the most of them um, in your Vim editing environment. Uh, but it's just installing a, a couple of things. It's a fairly lightweight Docker image. Uh, but basically, ju just some boilerplate to get out of the way. Now, there's, there's two plugins that um, I kind of think are pretty good baseline standard set of plugins to have, uh, which is Pathogen and um, uh, Vimplug. So Pathogen, I feel like you could get away with it these uh, with more modern Vim setups. Uh, it was sort of like one of those things that if you're going to start configuring Vim, like you, you got to do this first. This is standard step one. It basically makes your packages work in a way that uh, plays well with package managers, which this actually predates, but um, uh, they, not, they have just wound up working very well together. Uh, it does, you don't actually use it. It's just a thing that's there that makes things work correctly. So it's, a little, it's kind of a little bit of standard like setup that you got to do for, um, uh, 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 for getting things working. And there's a question, as far as getting uh, Alpine or other images, I've never used it. Uh, Ubuntu just works. You might be able to work with Alpine. Um, I'd love to know, actually. I, I, I couldn't give you a, a very good answer for that. Um, so now we got Pathogen. It basically makes your plugins work. Uh, there's some other standard boilerplate things, um, which is you know uh, here makes it compatible with like uh, Vim or VI, and just some other stuff to kind of just make Vim work correctly. Uh, you know out of the box in a way that's, that doesn't have all sorts of weird issues. And we're just going to go over a couple of uh, basic plugins. So we've kind of gone over Startify. It's just a fun one. It's not really necessary. Uh, NerdTree, um, I also consider NerdTree sort of a standard thing. Uh, it's just great for getting around. And again, it kind of like gives it that IDE feel if that is something that you want. But the other plugins I want to go a little bit more into are Control SF and FZF. Uh, so basically, this little section here is for uh, just uh, defining your Vim plugins. It's just you, you can add or remove them as necessary, then you, and then you just do plug install. Um, so this is using a plugin called Vim Plug. So those are the two baseline plugins, Pathogen and Plug Install. We got Pathogen working here, and then we um, configure our usage of Vim Plug here. And if you're used to like, you know, uh, PIP or NPM or whatever package manager uh, for languages that you, you you like to use. It's it's pretty similar concepts. It, I think it just uses Git submodules uh, behind the scenes. So going down, we got our standard boilerplate. Uh, now a couple of things that I like to have, which um, work well for me, and you might also like them. Um, and uh, so first off is remapping JJ to escape, which to me was weird at first. Um, but uh, it actually becomes very, it, 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 it's, uh, once you get the, me the muscle memory for it, you find yourself hitting JJ all over your place, all, all over the place on your computer whenever it's like, you're not even in Vim. Uh, so it's a blessing and a curse, but it's just a great of hopping out into to normal mode when you're uh, in insert. And also, um, I like to kind of take the nuclear route for, uh, for, for leader and just map it to space. It's, it kind of turns your entire vit, uh, editing uh, environment into a sort of like a, like a big video game controller because you're always thinking space and then some other combo. Uh, and then again, like it, it sort of uh, messes with the, the muscle memory of 
editing non-Vim environments. Uh, and then a couple other things here. Um, so these are just some little uh, commands that I've made that I find handy. But uh, whenever, wherever you are, you can just, I, I've got it so that you can just type uh, uh, config, and it'll take you to this file. And then you can just, once you've made your changes, you can just type reload, and it will resource your VimRC. So it's basically if you wanted to like modify your VimRC without leaving the project that you're currently in or something like that. Uh, and a couple other things. So I like to use tabs a lot, which um, again, kind of gives uh, gives them that more IDE uh, style feel. So if I wanted to, oops, uh, tab, Docker file, I kind of just like say the commands as words, even when they're not words. So like tab, tab e. Uh, so I've got uh, a Docker file. Uh, you could do tab uh, p to go back, but you could also I've got a setup so you can just I, I've remapped it to uh, Control H and Control L to kind of take the HAKL movements to the next level. So uh, I can go back and forth. So that's nice. It's just a great way of like getting around quickly in your different tabs and having a bunch of things open. Uh, and also kind of taking that another step further, I've got uh, uh, Control J, which will just bring down the tab. So it's just like down. It's like, you know, the down motion brings down the tab. And you probably noticed me using the mouse. Uh, I like the mouse. Sometimes it's just easier than hitting keys on the keyboard, or it's just what's it's what I'm feeling in the moment. Um, you do you. If you don't like it, don't use it. I do, so I will. Um, also, I just found out that you can, um, uh, depending on the terminal, you might need another setting for this, but you can actually, uh, if you have a split, you can actually take it and drag it which this is driving me crazy for a while that I couldn't do this. I can in this environment. I think it might be like a, a Mac versus Linux. Or I don't know what it is. In any case, uh, you may have to set the X term uh, option in your Vim config to do this, but you can actually just drag and uh, uh, drag the splits around, which like I know you can do it with, with, with actual commands, but this is just way easier for me to do. Uh, so that was cool. Oops. Uh, so those are the basic, like just pure Vim. Uh, configurations that I've got that make my life easier. And I want to get a li little bit more into these magical um, uh, plugins that I've got. So uh, FCF is the bee's knees. It is one of the things, like once I kind of like figured out how to use it with Vim, um, it really just changed how I work. Like I was, you know, pretty comfortable with Vim already getting around and I had various plugins, but then FCF just like changed the game for me. It is an external program. It's, it, it itself has no relation to Vim, but it's so tightly integrated with Vim that, you know, once you get used to it, they, 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 they feel inseparable. Um, here it is. Oops. Just go to the GitHub repo real quick. Uh, so this is the uh, repo for um, integrating FCF with Vim. FCF, if you haven't heard of it before, uh, is just a fuzzy find tool. It's a Unix philosophy that does one thing really well, um, which is to fuzzy find stuff uh, oh, I have, I'm hearing the, the, the wrong tab. Let me just close that. Sorry about that. Um, again, video streaming, I, ha I, I heard somebody else's uh, voice in another tab. <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, you, you just find, uh, it, it helps you fuzzy find text. And what does that mean? Uh, basically, it, it gives you all these commands, which let's take a quick look at those here. Uh, here are the commands that it gives you. We're not going to go over all of these. Uh, I would say take some time if, if you're into what I'm about to demo and take it a step further. But here's the stuff that I use constantly. So uh, you know how you type slash to search? Uh, I've got it so that you, if you, uh, I've mapped uh, slash slash to this B lines command, which I'm pretty sure stands for buffer lines. Um, and I, so basically, it takes the buffer that I'm in and it puts it all into uh, in, uh, an FCF buffer. I'm not sure if it's called a buffer, but just like an FCF instance. Uh, but then I can just sort of type the thing that I want. So I want to see, I don't know, all of my plugins. I can just type plug, and I can just hit up or down to get to the one that I want to go. There's FCF. Also, you can install Vim plug is really powerful in that it lets you install stuff that's not even a Vim script, not even a plugin directly. You could like this is installing the FCF binary onto your system locally, which is really, really great. Uh, that's a bit of a diversion, but so that's how you can quickly get around the buffer. So 
it's one of those things where like I'm a really bad typist, so I make a lot of mistakes. So if I'm just trying to type the exact thing that I'm trying to get to, I'm probably gonna get it wrong the first time because I'm probably gonna hit the wrong key or forget a key. With FCF, you can just sort of like mash in the thing you want to get to. So if I want to hit like you know plug, didn't quite that didn't quite work, but but like you can just sort of get around. So there's PL. It's smart. It kind of gets you the thing you want to go. You, gets you to the thing you want to go to um, almost accidentally half the time. But what do you want to do that for your entire project? So uh, this actually by, uh, uh, ties together Vim, FCF, and RipGrep. Um, this is the, why it's the RG command. So if I type uh, question mark, question mark, which is the same key as a slash slash. So there's that FCF buffer for uh, my entire project. And you can't see it from here. Let's see if I can scroll up. So this is like all of the project files, uh, all the files in this, uh, all the unignored files in this Git repo. And I can, I can just sort of type the thing that I want to find. Uh, so I want to see everything that, has, that says GitHub. Here's everywhere in the entire project that says GitHub. And you can see on the right side of the screen, I've got a preview of that. Uh, you can have this syntax colored. It just wasn't working. And uh, I think it's like a Linux thing with, um, uh, with what I configured it for. But it works really well in OS 10. I'm sure with, another, with enough tweaking, it would work well in Linux. But in any case, uh, you can just get around your project and just sort of type the thing you want to get to uh, and then hit Enter. And then it'll take you there. Uh, I'm just going to hop back with Control O. Uh, so those are like the, the probably the, some of my two most two most used key bindings, uh, and then also I just like to have a, uh, a file search, so uh, leader key, and kind of the same thing, but I'm just looking for the, the file names rather than the contents of the file, and that's just nice to be able to get around quickly. And also, uh, like a lot of this stuff is, are, are things that I've kind of taken from other uh, editors. Like, like one thing I really like about VS Code, for instance, is uh, the command palette. And I'm sure other editors have it too, but that's the one that I kind of associate it with. Uh, but I can just type CC. I've, I've mapped CC to uh, the commands command. So if I type CC, it's basically a command buffer. And I can type um, you know, whatever command I want to go to. So like, you know, I'll call it help or something. Uh, it opens a help hit enter again, it opens up help menu. Uh, so that's great if you can't remember um, the command that you want to go to. I use that for things where it's like, which one is that? Is that with a, is that uppercase, lowercase? You can just sort of type it in and select it from a command palette. A lot of this stuff is sort of like geared towards people who are like as bad typists as I am. I just make a lot of mistakes and these tools kind of help save me from myself, uh, which Vim's a bit of a weird choice as an editor. If you make a lot of key, if you make a lot of typos because each you know key press does so much, um, I think that a lot of folks are familiar with the nerd tree. Um, if not, it is a uh, a tree based little uh, sidebar you can open up here, um, and uh, you can navigate around. I just wanted to call out one thing that had annoyed me for with with nerd tree for years is that I've been using tabs for a long, long time, and um, if you uh, have several tabs open and you have a nerd tree instance open in each one, it's a separate instance, uh, which just is not helpful for me. Uh, I want to have like a singleton, essentially, instance of a uh, nerd tree that I use from tab to tab anywhere. Uh, turns out you can actually do that. Uh, it just takes a little bit of configuration, which I've got here, uh, but this makes it work more like an IDE rather than nerd tree, which I think is just a little bit more intuitive uh, for, for my brain anyways. But basically, you just got to fire up nerd tree and then call uh, nerd tree mirror. Uh, so basically, if I went to my Docker file and open up nerd tree, it's, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Yeah. And I went to here. It's the same instance, essentially, or they're mirrored. It feels like the same instance. Um, so that's just a way of making nerd tree a lot more intuitive, at least for me. Uh, I'm going to close that up. Um, I love nerd tree. Uh, you don't have to. I, I, I think there's some uh, there, there's some kind of some equivalent built-in functionality, uh, like the the I forgot what it's called, Net RW or something like that, or Explorer. It's all good. Uh, it works. It just nerd tree works well for me, so I like it, and I recommend it to others. Uh, and one that I don't see. 
people talking about quite so much is control SF. And I don't know what the SF stands for. Um, I don't know what a lot of the things stand for here. I just know that they're variously useful and how to use them. Uh, but basically it is a, uh, it's kind of, kind of like a front end for um, ACK or RipGrap or whatever uh, searching tool that you use. I think I've got uh, RipGrap set up on here. But they all work really well. Uh, so check this out for sure. Uh, I'm gonna give you a kind of a quick intro of how I like to use it. So actually before I get into control SF, I wanna show you just a plain uh, mapping that I've got. And what this crazy thing is doing uh, is if I hit leader S, um, then it just pops up this, uh, this command down here. So it's, it basically sets up a substitution uh, command for me, uh, all the keys, keys that I'd have to do that. So then I can just hit enter, um, you know, uh, vimconf. It wouldn't make any sense, but uh, now it just changes everything in the buffer to vimconf. Uh, but I don't want to do that right now. That's nice, but it will come in really handy, really handy in about 30 seconds. So uh, I've just got, a, got the common functionality that I use for control SF bound to key, bind, uh, bound to key mappings. Um, but if I hit uh, uh, leader A, it, you know, it pre-fills a uh, control SF command for me so I can type for uh, Vim user or just Vim. It uses uh, ripgrep to search for every, every instance of Vim in the code base, which is very handy. So there's, the, I've, I, there's not that many unignored files in this particular repo, so it's not showing a ton, but it works pretty well in you know, much larger code bases in my experience. Um, and uh, also, if you taking that a step further, I wanted if, if I wanted to search for, um, say, uh, uh, the the word do the thing I just did. So doing a control sub search with ripgrep, uh, but for the word under the cursor, uh, let's do that with GitHub, the word GitHub. So uh, leader big A. Okay, so now it's basically it's kind of like kind of turn that word under the cursor into like a magical thing to search for, just like leader A and it searches for all instances of GitHub uh, in the project, which I guess uh, didn't quite find it. Why didn't it find it in the Vim file? It should have. I don't know why not. Um, in any case, oh, because the I, maybe the VimRC is uh, not mapped up properly. Anyways, um, usually works. <laughs> of course, now that I'm live, it's, it's not doing quite the thing that I wanted to do. But basically, it, it searches for the word under the cursor in, in, in the entire project. And that's handy, because if I wanted to change, uh, say, let, um, let's, oops, search for leader. Oh, no, it didn't. Because oh, I think it did the wrong word, the wrong uh, mapping. So let's search for, trying to find a better example here. I'll just search for GitHub again. But if I wanted to change everything in the projects from GitHub to say like Bitbucket or something, then I can just I can just do leader S, and then like it's got that pre-filled um, substitution command. I can change it to Bitbucket or Git Bucket, Bit Bitbucket. Yeah, we would, we don't actually want to use Bitbucket, but basically then I could save it, commit, write the file. Um, I don't actually want to make make this change. Uh, but basically, for all the buffers that are open on the left side here, which is anything that is a match, it would update uh, all the words in the entire project. So it's basically a, 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 a quick and dirty find and replace. There's other tools to do that. This is just one that is that works well for like 98% of my use cases. So I, I've kind of just like made it part of my regular workflow. Uh, I don't want to save that. Um, Getting close to, towards the end here, I just wanted to show like one more little bonus section. Now, uh, Vim 8 has a really powerful terminal built in. Um, I think it doesn't get enough respect. I know that like NeoVim came first and that's awesome. I think it's probably what kind of forced Vim's hand to get a terminal, but it's great. Honestly, especially like on Windows, it's better than the built-in terminal half the time. Uh, but the cool thing is, is you can fire up entire uh, 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 interactive command line programs within Vim in their own tab. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So essentially, this uh, this plus plus close argument for the term command 
So maybe, let, let, let's back up for a second. So this, this command, uh, leader h, snapping, is going to open up a new tab. It's going to open a terminal instance in that tab, running htop, and then once it's done, it's going to close. So let's give that a try. Uh, so leader h, there's htop, good old htop, or whatever command that you need. Uh, and I've also got, I can actually just leave this running in a tab here. Uh, it's almost like a, kind of a built-in, you know, tmux of sorts. I've got uh, key map, uh, I've got terminal mappings uh, to have those tab P and tab N commands like I had previously in the file, but I can, it works in the terminal mode too, because that's actually a mode in Vim is terminal mode, normal mode, in, insert mode, terminal mode. Uh, so I can just leave that running. And essentially once I quit out of htop, hitting Q, it'll just close the tab. Uh, but I can leave that running again. And um, I just want to plug uh, one of my favorite programs that's not Vim, but it works so well with Vim uh, that I just had to, to show it here. So like I can do leader H um, uh, for htop, I can do leader G uh, for lazy get. Uh, this person, Jesse Duffield, has a couple of these, like, these lazy uh, programs. Uh, he also makes lazy Docker, which is just invaluable if you're using Docker. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to do uh, uh, leader G, and now I have um, an incredibly powerful uh, git, command, uh, git command line UI uh, for git. That was a mouthful. But uh, explaining this is a bit out of the, the, the scope of this, I would just say, like, take some time to check out lazy git. It will change your life forever. Um, I used to use TIG, uh, but now I'm a, uh, a, a lazy git convert for life. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, you can have lazy git running, you can have htop running, you can have you know vim in a you know your, your vim buffer vim buffer running. Uh, it's really powerful. So uh, I guess it's sort of like is obviated tmux for me because like I don't need to keep sessions alive because I, I I just work on my local system. But it's like it's essentially a lot of the a lot of the functionality that I would have need maybe needed from tmux just built right into vim, and that's just standard vim eight like that. You can check out this repo. Uh, let's go back here. There's no magic in there. It's just basic Vim with a couple of things installed on this, uh, you know, to, to, to power it, like, you know, htop and rip, rip some of the things that we went over. Uh, but yeah, um, I feel like we're coming to the end here. So that's all I really wanted to show. Um, just, and my, this is kind of sort of a simplified version of my VimRC, uh, which I'm always tweaking, and, but like, these are the things that I use most often. Um, but I guess we've got, well, I've got a minute. Um, we started a little bit late, but I can, I'm happy to open up to questions if anybody uh, wanted to know anything about this or anything else, I'd be happy to answer questions the best I can. I'll give it a few se seconds because I know that there's a, uh, a bit of delay. In fact, I'll scroll up too to see if I could find anything. Um, Sorry if I missed questions. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the chat. Um, in any case, if you want to ask me anything, uh, I'm Jeremy C. Khan on uh, Twitter. So it's the same as my, my uh, GitHub handle, which is uh, this. But it's, you can find me on, on the internet. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for coming to my talk. And I, uh, I just want to also, I forgot to mention earlier, but uh, thank you to everybody who organized this. Um, uh, Adam, that is a ton of work. Uh, prime, uh, prime agent that like, thank you for emceeing this whole thing. It's a lot. Uh, so yeah, uh, feel free to get a hold of me and um, I'll see you at the other talks. Thanks so much, everyone.